even if you know if you rate it kind of at the middle of the road experience it it's not as bad as you know other shows that i can think of where it's just yeah. like man this is like a slog like that's true huh? i'm like yeah. you know browsing reddit on my phone while doing it Watching i never really had 2x speed any moments yeah exactly i did not <laughs> 2x speed this show so <laughs> Welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast. On this show, we'll be discuss- giving our thoughts on the anime we just watched. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Shren. Hello! Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. And finally, we have Justin. Hey, guys. So, uh, if you've been keeping up with us, I guess um, this is going to be the first episode of our new format. Uh, before, we used to do weekly discussions of the sh- episodes that just aired that week, but we're changing formats. Um, so now we're just going to focus on one show per episode. Uh, this episode, we're going to focus on Hige Hero, um, or I guess the English title. What's the English title, Justin? Yes, everybody get ready, because it is a <laughs> mouthful. And I'll try not to trip up here, but Hige Hero, after being rejected, I shaved and took in a high school runaway. Yes. So, so much stuff is, going on. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's so literal. The, the real summary of what we're talking about. So we're at uh, just one season only, had 13 episodes. I should, there's more teasers in it. I should have um, found out the director's name and studio, but we'll fix that for next time. Um, uh, actually, the, the studio here, Project 9. Project, or project, nine. Number, nine. project yep. number 9. The director yeah. was uh, Kamikita Manabu. Okay, so thanks. We got for, your back. Yeah, thanks for carrying my sorry ass. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's like general details. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be talking about this this format um, uh, discussion still. We, we do have a Discord, um, so you can check that in the description. You can. Uh, once summer uh, season starts, or I guess it might be starting by the time this airs, we'll give our thoughts on our shows that are airing. And so we'll, we'll keep the weekly sessions in the Discord. We just won't be recording it every week like we usually did. We're going to change to this format now. So, so let's move on to Hige Hero. Um, just a brief summary. Um, it's basically like the title said. Uh, we have the main <laughs> character, Yoshida. Um, he gets rejected pro- by the girl he loves, uh, Goto. And so while he's Going home drunk, he uh he meets high a high school girl named Sayu, and he needs oh, to. Oh, real, he, she's under a lamplight that comes into play later on. Yes. yes, yeah. She, so uh, he, uh, he sees her. Um, he, he realizes she's a runaway, and he decides to take her in out of the goodness of his heart. So that's I say that as that's a main summary, but that's basically episode one right there. So I guess we can just move on to episode one. That's that's literally what happened. It's so literal in like. What the summary is, and what episode one is, and what the title is. So that's episode one. You get hero. Yeah. yeah. No, I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, we get this this quick introduction to Yoshida. You know, average salary man in Japan, just kind of grinding away at work, and you know, uh, hey, unfortunate to that, him. He's a he's a programmer. <laughs> ah, yes. yes. I can't forget the the you know and, the, the and, dual combo and and the, also. The, and the fake Java in the, the computer screens that they have. <laughs> yes, yes. Also, Only and like an average guy getting uh, getting rejected and basically going home drunk. Yeah, like I said, uh, <laughs> confesses to uh, the girl that he's been, you know, crushing on for, for quite some years and gets rejected. And that is where the entire story begins of running into this high school or something. Is, is his boss. Yeah, it's kind of kind of weird, too. It's normal, too, I mean, right? He likes his older women, I guess, so. That he does. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, yes. And, and certain other features as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, did they ever say how old Yoshida was? I assume he's like 25. Uh, 26. 26. 26. Okay. Mm-hmm. 26. Yeah. Yeah. He's 26. So kind of in the still beginning parts of his career. So. And uh, Goto, obviously older. And it sounds like they were uh, basically he's been in love with her for five years. Wow. So basically, ever since he joined the company, then I assume yeah. it was a couple years after yeah. graduation. And he immediately knew. The long yeah. haul. Yeah. The plot was very great with uh, the company. But he, yeah. so, so, like the first episode, I, I just remember um, he, they're, cause they're, eating, they're eating at the Japanese barbecue place, the Jackie Niku. Um, and like that, this, this will come a lot in this show, is them eating at Yaki Niku. But the first episode, <laughs> that's, that's where he. He was too drunk, right? And he confessed his love to her. And then, 
and then she rejected him, and that's funny. He, he wasn't drunk, drunk, but he was drinking. Tipsy. He was drinking yeah, that liquid courage. He was building up that confidence. Buzz. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, he was uh, walking home. Home girl hit her with a yeah, man. Uh, I got a boyfriend. And oh yeah, that's yeah. She she told him that yeah, was boyfriend. He was like tipsy. Wasn't he tipsy? Buzz. Uh, you see, when uh, he was he when he was walking home. <laughs> Oh, no, no, he, he was buzzed home, afterwards, yeah. but when he confessed, I believe he was, he wasn't even, like, buzz. I think he, they just got there, they were eating, oh. and then he just confessed. Yeah, yeah. I, think he, yeah, yeah. I think he was nice. It wasn't until after he went to the other bar with his coworker Hashimoto, where he really oh, started okay. to, uh, to pound back the brewskis, and that's oh, yeah. what leads, you know, to the events of why he is going home so late, and runs into, uh, you know, Sayu, this, this high schooler that he finds slumped over under a lamppost. Uh-huh. And, and, and the key significance that that will have <laughs> yes <laughs> so significant mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and then he just like he just like um asked her like he asked her you know what are you doing here does she say that she's a runaway or she says like she's just looking for just uh, she's looking for a state to, place to stay yeah. yeah yeah we knew nothing about her you at know, that point. nothing okay. really about her other okay. than her you know school uniform and everything so we can see that, that that's when yoshida uh that's yeah when Yoshida um asked her to come stay with him for the night, I guess. And he's I guess he I mean he just he just like tries to sleep it off drunk. Did she try to do anything with I don't remember from the Dude, first episode. When did she not try to do something? I mean like she, constantly, man. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I it think, was I think it was first fair, episode, yes. He, yeah, she did she, try something first episode. Okay. I think she she asked. I don't think she she literally forced stuff on him, but then she did well, say, you know, for letting me stay, what can I do for you? Suggesting okay. something sexual, but he yeah. was like, you know what? That that just makes me some miso soup. Goddamn, so yeah, fucking okay. hungover oh. or drunk, yeah. And then yeah, that's just what happened. Yeah, because basically she was just gonna do that because like all of her previous places she was staying at, that just what it ended up being. Mm-hmm. So she just thought that was like a that was just like a normal thing for staying at people's places, dudes' okay. places. Oh, I guess like that's like I guess we should say that's like the setup right there because we spent a lot of time in the first episode, but that's like basically a lot of setup for the first season. So we yep. end up mm-hmm. uh, having the agreement that like that she'll that she she'll stay with him, and then she just says like just do chores. I don't want anything else. And miso soup. Miso soup, yes, that too. <laughs> yeah, man. Just, so that's, can't that's, forget like, that the number one way to a guy's heart: food. Yes, yes. Oh, good cooking. That too. <laughs> that too. So that's like the main setup of the story right there. That's like that's like the main hook of the first episode, and then um, yeah. we'll talk. I guess we can talk about like, well, we can go to episode two, or maybe just give you guys initial thoughts on what you after this first episode. What do you think of this? Like, what you're thinking, dude. Time? The first two episodes sold me on this show. Like, it started. It started off so good. There were so many good like Yoshida lines that that he, that basically that he dropped in that first episode. And also, even like the second episode, like with between like him and Goto, where it's just you know after episode two, it was just you know Goto was uh was the waifu of the show, um, it was just like their back and forth, it just worked out so perfectly. Even though Wait, he did, did get rejected, say episode two. No, the only well, the whole thing is basically like you know Yoshida being like the you know the ten out of ten guy he ha- he is. He had one question for her, and he basically oh, just asked her you know, what that's... what size are them cups, and then you know then I even mean... like basically just the, hold on, even the plus that. She answers. <laughs> it's sure. just like okay, all right, all right. We we got sure. the we got the main the main pairing. But for me, it's like I wasn't really so. I don't know. I was I was still like I didn't really wasn't like very much for Goto just because like she was just how like, dare you? It was just the girl who rejected him, and it's just how um, like, dare you? It just sounded like she was trying to like lead him on or something. So I wasn't really a big yeah. fan of Goto by this point. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. I That's think true. for me, the the thing that really drew me in was that, you know, they, they didn't necessarily take the easy route with how Yoshida was kind of first introduced as as a main character. I think, you know, a lot of times with these these type of shows, you sometimes get these MCs that kind of just really go with the flow of what the girl wants. And, you know, with Sayo kind of offering her body and other things at the beginning, a lot of people would have just been like, hell yeah, like sign me up, like, OK, and kind of just been kind of the sleazeball route. But I think the thing with Yoshida that through the first episode you gain a lot of respect for him where he kind of, you know, puts the brakes on that like full stop with Sayu and really just kind of evolves into what has been kind of a a um a plot device for the show as a whole of like how Sayu's interpretation of men is something completely wrong and Yoshida is the character that shows her, you know, how things should be. And I think a lot of people could resonate with that and kind of appreciate that with how things kind of evolved. So 
that's what really drew me in was just him being different in a way, I guess. And yeah. the being gentleman. unique enough. Exactly. Uh, I think for me, it's like, it's been Isayu, just because, like, I mean, I was expecting Yoshida to act that way because I feel like if you didn't do have him, if you didn't have him act that way, I feel like like people would get more mad or it'd be like, <laughs> I don't know, like, yep. just not like the thing you would do in this situation. So. To well, uh... But I was like, more, I was just for curious, curious on Sayu's story. Why? And it's like, just, just why she is the way she is. And just want, I want her open up her character more. So, so Sayu's character really um, drew, drew me in for the show. I, I I was hoping like the show would like really fo- like, focus on her, her and having her heal her trauma. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the couple like the couple episodes like when you know hearing you guys when you were going over it on the main podcast, that's basically what got got me. And also, I think it was a uh, I'm pretty sure that Ulysses and um and there, there was uh, some there was some uh, talks in the chat as well that kind of got me like more into it. Oh yeah, but... shout out to Ulysses because he's really the reason why I I, I watched Tiga Hero because I think it was only it was only gonna be just me, just Koo and and I think Justin gonna watch uh-huh. it but like mm-hmm. i i had no plans to watch it it wasn't if i didn't and then strand like hopped on and then like i saw usually see really want us to talk about it, so uh, shout outs to him De- desmond jumped in at some point as well and yeah. kept the conversation going so the, it really got us going yeah, so, so thank you say... so shout outs to shout outs to those guys yes. yeah definitely been our, our strongest talked about show from this last season it has yeah, been so, <laughs> yeah a lot, a lot of conversation on discord so yeah so, makes me confident Ooh, that we been... can keep keep doing it for, for other shows too who you've been very quiet are you no i'm just listening to you guys okay. <laughs> um because i'm not i don't really have much to add right you guys are just mm-hmm. kind of clearing everything up doing, right now okay doing great although the only time yeah. i will add is uh probably goto but it's not time for that section yet so. okay yeah, all right we'll, we'll so get, you're I'll, just I'll, waiting I'll, I'll 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 um yeah because i don't want so so going forward for the search i don't want to just like just summarize what happens in the show but like let's say like I mean, so after like the initial, the initial like impressions, you know, we all we all have a strong impression of this show. So we move on to like uh, like mid season, like we can see more of the characters. Let's before we're talking about like Goto, let's let's talk about Yuzuha and like her part oh my in the story. I'll, like I'll start this because <laughs> first it's, she, first she just seems like you know like the like the the best friend in a sense like coworker type of thing where she seemed like she was like really like uh, outgoing was fun just kind of like was really positive and helping out others where i was like i was like oh damn she's like the hero of snap of uh snafu and that shit changed so strange, quick strange got we... betrayed so hard by yuzuha <laughs> oh my god he it was... wasn't even like it wasn't even like it was it wasn't even like a delay it was episode three i think we found where i think oh, i think mm-hmm. what, what did i say earlier like episode three she already started stalking him she or, was, or, like, that's why yeah, she, 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 met, she met sayu and that's how she used Sayu's yeah okay yeah Yoshira. like I, like episode two, like I thought, damn, like because uh, I I, re- I like Goto a lot, and then but then you have the you know the Yuzuha come in. I was like, all right, you know she's actually you know we just assumed like she had no chance just because she was like the third string, but I didn't think they were to go the route that they did because then you go one episode later and bam, he's she's just like waiting outside of his house, and I'm like thinking, damn, let's let's calm down, and then I was like, holy, sh-. and it was just it, it did not get any better from that point. It just yeah. kept getting worse and worse, Dude, and I was like, just like, I can't believe I said. I, I can't believe I ever like, connected her to Iroha at all, like, and I just like, felt awful. Yeah, like, like you say, it got worse. Like, just I just remember just like her always like trying to bump into Yoshida and saying, "Hey, are you free? You want to see a movie?" Yeah, yeah, it's fancy meeting you here. Oh, by the way, yeah. want to go see a movie? <laughs> and it wasn't like a once a week type thing, you know. It was kind of like oh god, like, every happen- day or every other day, just being happen- like, "Yo, yeah. my life is your life. We're doing yeah. what we want to do." And well, it's just like, all right, homegirl, so she, she has the perfect like. Like path to like, yep. Akam. Akam not even work. coworkers. She was our, like he was her like supervisor in a sense, you oh. know, or her team lead. I know. Yeah, so like, think... she was always going to talk to the guy. She always had an excuse. Yeah. It's the <laughs> then... the great inner office complications of you know working in an office. <laughs> and then I'll just we'll, I guess we'll skip ahead to one of the later episodes where you know she's like talking to Sayu in the karaoke bar, and then like they you know find me up Yoshida, and then. Like she just gives up at that point, and she starts crying alone in like the karaoke bar. You know, usually for those kind of characters, I feel bad. But at this, I think we all agree. Like this is like nope. the one exception where like wow, like yeah, you you deserve it. Like I don't really, I mean, I don't really feel bad for you at this point. 
Well, the thing is, Yuzaha, we really knew nothing about her. Like, the way she's acting, you'd, you'd think that they were, like, almost living together for years or so. Where I think, like, we only knew of her being new, right? Like, I think, like, within that year, if even. She was maybe. newer. She was one of the newer employees, yeah. yeah. Okay. But then she, she has known Yoshida for a while, and I guess she did have time to develop feelings for him. Uh, so that's probably the only saving grace as to why she would be acting this way. Yeah. Um, but that that's all I got for her. So it, it definitely does seem like, you know, she was much more reserved from the get-go before we see her. And then obviously, yeah. you know, as we do get introduced to her, at this point, Yoshida is already begun on his kind of adventure, if you call it, with Sayu. So she kind of well, can even notice that change. And that's when it really starts to become, I think, more well, apparent. Because that will even tie into Goto as well. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. she gets really jealous with Goto. And that's where it starts really kicking off. Like, And then Sayu busts in. <laughs> it gets even worse. Yeah, so, so I guess like on that note, like we're just gonna like, yeah, she's like, she's like usually, usually she's like the kicker you're supposed to feel bad for, but this is like the absolutely the rare the rare exception. Like it's I can't believe this happened in the show that, that, that we, I had to say that this this is the this character you're terrified. That. Yeah, yeah, you're ter- you're terrified of this character. You see her like like walking in the like the street at night. Now you you go to the other side of the sidewalk. <laughs> No, no, no. She wasn't like oh, terrifying. Scared. She wasn't like oh, beyond that. Oh, no, 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 no. She no, was no. just. I, I, she was annoying. I wouldn't say she was scared, but she was definitely the more annoying character at this point. Terrifying. Yeah. Okay, when you have somebody that's just like sitting outside your house, you're in. You're getting to that point where you know you don't know how like this character is. Not, not, not yandere levels yet. Oh, it was more okay. annoying. It was annoying. Okay. Not right. terrifying. I think okay. outside his house. I think she was just like bumping into him on, on his way home. Like, yeah, because uh, they outside. took like similar routes and I stuff. I think they're on the same like train station. Well, no, because mm-hmm. remember, because yeah, no, because she was outside of his house one time because you know she asked like, oh, like, uh, can we go back to your place? And then you know Yoshi is trying to cover oh, yeah. it up by saying she, she did follow him once. Yeah, oh, follow oh, yeah. her. Uh, no, no, him. And him she's and like, Goto, why, why can't that? Yeah. yeah, she's like, yeah. I, I saw you have like multiple girls at your place. It's just like, damn, let's calm down. Yeah, so that's that's anyway. That's, I think that's we covered Yuja. Uh, that's that's <laughs> Yuja in that show. Why don't we uh, why don't we swap it up to uh, uh, Asami? You know, the first uh, friend oh, that okay. Sayu gets to you know kind of have on in her her own regard. Did what she... uh what do you guys think of Asami throughout the her life? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wait. I gotta say a lot of the characters here. I I kind of I like like the first impressions I had on them. I think all the characters, but the first impressions on all the characters like drastically changed to the other side of the spectrum like with, with her introduction i thought she was gonna be like that annoying best friend i was gonna like pry into her life and like make it worse for her but like overall throughout her development i i really love the character and she definitely won like the best friend award like of the year i guess for all, for anime but really love the character especially towards the end where she finally i guess she finally hit her goal where she was starting to write stories again and follow mm-hmm. her dream so, uh, really love her, her, her character. Yeah, Asami for sure is one of those, you know, ride or die friends that in mm-hmm. such a short time that we got to see her, we really did get to to appreciate, you know, the things that she did for Sayu and, and kind of giving her that confidence back to, you know, do all the all these things of getting out of her shell and kind of this rut that she had been stuck in. So, uh, she's definitely uh, the true homie for life in that <laughs> regard. And I think, you know, even as well... Um, they did a good job of kind of quickly fleshing out, you know, her background and how she does come from a, a family that is, you know, fairly well off and everything. But to kind of Ku's point, you know, she was strong willed enough to to chase these passions that she had of becoming, you know, a, a writer and everything. And so, um, again, I had really no qualms with Asami. I think she just did an overall good job of supporting, you know, both Yoshida and Sai yep. when they needed it. Yeah. I wish we would have actually gotten more of her too, because um, there was there was like a bit where it seemed like she was in almost, uh, or she was in a lot of the scenes like for maybe a couple episodes, and then everything just went more out to Yoshida, Sayu, and yeah, that's that's the thing about like the supporting characters. I think we'll hit on that later, but like yeah. that's the thing we can put in in overall general. So that, yeah, so and then I'll just I'm gonna let Ku here have the spotlight. Let them talk about Goto. Let's let's talk about oh. Goto. <laughs> where where do I begin? God damn. I mean it's it's still summer or it's it's gonna be fall soon, right? I think that's what it is, right? Fall. Um mm-hmm. but I gotta say she is probably my top waifu 
of the year. Really? I can't see anyone mm. else. I do. I, I love this guy, right? Like you and ideally, Ulysses, man. No, I'm not saying that like with design or or whatever. But if she was real, most definitely I, I mean, would go after her. <laughs> because she like I, I guess in the beginning, like I said, I, I a lot of the I think if not all the characters, like my first impressions of them totally flipped towards the end, right? Okay. Like so in the you... very beginning. Yeah, well she was like I had a boyfriend, but then it turns out she didn't, she was lying because she was yeah. trying to be mysterious or whatever. You know, like I said, at, in the beginning I was like, Man, what a bitch, you know, like how could she <laughs> okay. how could she so play you... my guy Yoshida like that? So so you you were thinking about that. I, I thought you were on her side this whole time, but I didn't know like you were no, 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 no. that like yeah, like, because we didn't really know her character yet, right? Because it happened mm-hmm. so early, it gave us so much time for her to still play the villain, right? She mm-hmm. could have easily, like, meddled with uh, Sayu and Yoshida. She could have been the one calling the cops. Like, when she was brought over to meet Sayu for the first time, it could have gone either way, right? But in the end, it turns out she was just a girl that likes to, you know, like, be that mysterious one, keeps the guys chasing her. She was actually a real homie. She was trying to help out Sayu. Uh, you know, be like that that feminine role model in her life, in a sense, due to her... Uh, the the her true kind of, mother figure. Right, and yeah. like in these circumstances, right? Like, uh, Asami was cool, but she was like the same age group. But you know, like Goto, being an older one, that was definitely like the, I, I the, mean, the motherly I, I, figure she needed. I saw her more yeah. as an older sister than motherly. But... Oh, or I guess not motherly, but like, yeah, yeah the the, uh, the mature, yeah. the, the mature yeah. uh, role to look after, right? So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, throughout... Throughout the show, uh, they didn't really give her much, uh, much of the the spotlight, which I I really hate. But yeah, definitely we'll, we'll, Goto, we'll with end. what you got, it's, it's it, dude, perfect. All right, yeah. perfect. Damn. Damn, I guess like I mean, I'll say like for me, like I still, I also uh, changed my mind, sorcerer, but I still like I still didn't like. I, I felt like she was just leading on Yoshida. I was like that was like my my main um, resistance against her, but. Uh, the episode when she did, like, when she did talk with Sayu and she became, like, that older uh, sister figure for her, I, that made me appreciate her more. And just, like, mm-hmm. and then just, and then she didn't, I guess, but then after that, she didn't really do much for the rest of the series, so I can't really say much. But I don't, I didn't really, like, my initial, like, resistance to her for Leon Yoshida just went away. And yeah. she, I, didn't, I don't love her, like, like who does, but, like, I, like, I still, I appreciate what she did. So I'm, like, I'm more yeah. neutral on her. I think we could all say at the end of the day, you know, more time and more focus. He's definitely a character that has more depth than, yep. you know, as we kind of first initially saw and, and kind of quickly wrote off. So totally yep. wasted potential. Wasted. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Um, God, was it like, because towards the, because when what was it? I don't, I don't know if this was the middle part of the season now with, with her where, uh, you know, we basically, I, I remember Goto and Yuzuha having a conversation based, you know, of Yuzuha saying, doesn't this, stuff with like Sayu just like infuriates you and then she just says you know whatever happens happens basically and it's just and it's just like, all right good you know good response yeah. good response yeah, I, right. I think that's the other thing that made me appreciate goto a lot is when yuzuha kind of just you know flies off the handle during their lunch <laughs> yeah. break and, and goto just completely gives her a reality check of just you know hey like recognize what it is and realize where you are right now and like how kind of you know stupid you're sounding for lack yeah. of a better word yeah, just, you know, so it, definitely some some big ups to Goto there. Because the things with Yuzuha too, like she, I don't know if she really ever kind of uh, admitted to her, you know, her uh, stalker status at, at any point. And then no. the thing is, uh, the thing, okay. And then Goto actually like owns up to basically saying, "Oh yeah, I was lying about all that anyway," like all mm-hmm. that stuff. And you, you actually believe her just because of her actions she's been doing uh, throughout this, you know, the, this season that actually shows her. So you can actually have like that believability where she, you know, she actually owned up, owned up everything. Basically, you know, at that point afterwards, she just kind of told everything how it was and just didn't hold, just didn't hide anything anymore. And then just, you know, they just rode the wave. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got yeah. on Goto, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So again, like another uh, supporting character that like that you know, spotlight. So we'll talk about that later. All right. Um, Supporting yeah. Jesus, <laughs> so, yes, so oh, sad. It's not so bad because uh, the show is basically Yoshida and Sayu. So, we, yeah, um, I know, man. So We're I'm, agreeing. I'm, it just I'm, sounds gonna, so... <laughs> I'm gonna get to that part, but uh, I just uh, there's one scene that happened in the middle. I guess I'll just I want to highlight it's, it's basically when she meets um, Q, uh, Kyuya, with Kyuya. He's uh, he's the guy that she because the thing about Sayu too, like, oh, she, yeah. before she met Yoshida, she slept around with a bunch of guys 
stay at their place and then they kicked her out. And so Kyoya was like one of those guys that just like that, that did that and then they end up meeting at the at the convenience store where she worked he just at. Happens to be working at the convenience store. Yes. Continue. Yes. <laughs> And then, Not many convenience stores in Japan, right? Oh no, yeah. no definitely. Well, maybe like three. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like they did highlight how like one of the scenes is like where he did try to force himself on Sayu, and like it was like they did it in a way that where it felt like it felt not like not like realistic, but it felt like they understood like the perspective of someone who'd be in that situation. So even though like it was it was a hard scene to watch, I still I'll give them props for uh. I mean, like stuff, stuff like this does happen, and that like it's important to show people like that's why like 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 uh like a lot of girls are afraid in that situation. Also, like, uh, sh- showing Sayu just being uh just really vulnerable in that situation. Like she was so scared. Like like you know you see you hear people say like like why don't you just say no or like, or resist or run away? But like you see from her perspective, like she was really scared. So I think the show did a good job highlighting why like people like. Why people like are feel like Sayu in that situation where she just wanted to get over with because she's too scared to do anything else. No, yeah. or you just freeze, like you said, you yeah. don't know what to do. Your body locks up, and so, so I'm gonna know, give I'm gonna, I'll yeah. give props to the show for that. But I but then but then the next thing that happens, <laughs> Yoshida shows up and he just tells the guy to get out. But then he doesn't do anything. He just he just yells at the guy, but he doesn't even do anything. He just he he just like says like like don't show your face. But like but the guy basically gets the last laugh because he basically like. He just says like to Yoshida, like like you're not what was it like you you you, don't, you say you're doing this for the kindness of your heart, that's just that's such BS, you know, get over yourself. Mm-hmm. And he just walks away. That that part like just that just basically like negated <laughs> the thing that just happened. Like it was such a it was like yeah. a good it was a good thing to highlight and then it just made Yoshida look so weak after that. Definitely. <sighs> that that would say that's one of the big things that's a uh if I had to pick major graves about Yoshida, those type of things are like what I would say it's for. Yeah, is when he's just being too too reserved. It's like, <laughs> all right, man, just let it out. Let it out sometimes. Yeah, it's, he- it's healthier that way, and it's deserved. <laughs> for for me, like the the whole situation, like I thought it was good, but then it was the epi- I think it's the episode after that where that like too. Sayu yes, and that guy that. basically become best friends, like, and everything was swept under the rug. Well, everything I was fine. Say best friends, but yeah, well, they became amicable, and he did, you know, help her out in the what well, we will talk about. You know, like, the situation. Like you think in a situation like this, like from. Sayu would be so triggered by like, just being oh, a yeah. guy. Damn. And, like, yeah, they have to act like they're normal. Yeah. And then, yeah, later down, like, like they try like to make like the guy like, like when when her brother was looking for her, like, they try and make him like, like, like seem like he's helping her, like, you know, hide from her brother. But it just feels like it feels so like like left field where it's, like like we were just, we had this really intense moment with him earlier. And now it's just it's yeah it's like it's like there's things are normal and they shouldn't be. No, it's one of those things where due to the amount of episodes we have, you feel like things just have to get glazed over in terms of like moving forward the story. Yeah. And things don't get their their proper kind of uh, juxtaposition or or fleshing out of how it should go, you know, right from the eyes as a viewer. So, yeah, that's that's a major thing that happened. And then um, certain I know like this is one of the claims you had too, where uh. There's so much like like you we kept thinking like like oh like there's like both well, like they'll be normal or whatever but then you, like there was a lot of those like sexual tensions that happened oh God. Where, like where they were yeah that happened around this time too yep, yep. well because it's because they had this they had an episode um I don't know which one was it uh was it was it episode five or which one are we on um what I event I guess are you trying to talk about the one where they basically were they the episode was entirely about them basically being able to just live together oh. I think uh, was it where right after, after they went to the festival, I know there's there's the summer yeah. festival where like they were holding yeah. hands. Yes, uh, well, it was before, before that, that though. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah it was before that. Um, I want to say it was like midway through the season where they had this entire episode dedicated to how uh, Sayu was, you know, um, you know, pu- uh, pushing towards Yoshida again with you know for, with sexual tension. But then they came up, they came with that mutual understanding where they they said like. This is when it felt like we were truly living together, like oh, as, think, you know, just basically friends. It's, it's like maybe after, after that the incident of Kyoya, I think she tried to seduce, uh, yes. Yoshida, and she yep. was saying, you know, why don't you sleep with me? And then that's when they had to understand that that mutual yeah. understanding. That they were yeah, just, like, they had living like, together. Yeah. Which I, at that point, I thought it was like one of the the almost like main events of the whole entire season, where I thought it was like it was it was really well done. 
the whole point of it across was where I thought like, okay, I, I even remember mentioning this in the podcast saying, oh, thank God we got that out of the done. We got it out of the way. Yeah. You least it says episode seven yeah. or eight, but once yeah. that was done, I thought like, okay, we can move on to something else, you know, maybe a little bit more Goto action. We got better of that immediately. More sexual <laughs> tension. The next episode, I'm yep. thinking, what was the point? What was the point of that? Like that great buildup. And then uh, just the, the, the whole understanding. And then I thought we could just go to comedy, but. I'll go ahead, Justin. No, I was just going to say that's a, that's one of the other things, you know, as we kind of look at the show as a whole, I'd say is like you get a lot of moments of buildup and, and things kind of fall flat frustratingly, you know, most of the time. And and this is kind of another perfect instance of it. So that's kind of what I was just thinking of, you know, as we yeah. kind of are talking of these these very, you know, specific moments that really kind of shine in the show and then kind of fall short. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so like building off strength, it's like, yeah, so immediately after they had that understanding with Sayu trying to like ask Shoshi to sleep with them again, then it's like they're doing, like, they're doing, they're like, was it trying to do laundry and she fall on him? That was like right after. And then we had the summer festival and they made that excuse, like, oh, like, let's hold hands so we don't get lost. And then and they're like... make, they're making everything <laughs> so, awkward between, like, the, so awkward between them. And then like Yoshi had that weird like blank out where he was like looking at fireworks and he was afraid he lost Sayu. And she was just walking yeah. away trash, and they made that all dramatic. So many of those yeah, things. Yeah, I didn't like that. It made kind of yeah. Yoshi ever look really weak in that yeah. instance, unfortunately. Well, and at the same time, because we found out like through Ulysses and uh, uh it, it just like they skipped arcs uh, of of like of Yoshi's backstory. So you know he could have been it could have because so something could have happened with his now. Now we know his ex yeah. arc where that could make him panic like that but we have no clue so it just mm-hmm. makes it seem like he's just like a over overly protective father who's you know a little bit into <laughs> anyway yeah, we should, go ahead. We should mention too let's, like, let's yeah. say like a stepbrother let's go with that route. oh yeah, yes, no, yes. No, father, you want to go the father route otherwise you're gonna make this whole <laughs> ending weird just yeah. saying yeah. let's go with the stepbrother route. Oh. should mention too yeah because it's based on a light novel and there's five volumes and actually the fifth volume came out like just a month ago so it came out Mm-hmm. Like when the season was airing, so and yeah, was we, crazy. We, we we did we did learn too that like yeah, the ex girlfriend arc got cut out because just to fit it all into one season. So mm-hmm. yeah, so that's that's one part of like what about just like just the sexual tension between Yoshia and Sayu, and then and then um the next reason is just like the brother showing out of nowhere, and then just seeing Sayu come back, and the whole bringing Sayu back to Hokkaido. Um, mm-hmm. I, I guess like I just want to bring up just like how. Like, cause we can talk about the mom a little bit later, but I just want to bring up right now, just like when Sayu had to confront her past. I guess, I guess we, should, yeah, I mentioned too how like the whole reason why she ran away is because, um, because she made friends with this girl, but like, but they kept getting bullied, and Sayu kept trying to stand up for both of them. Like the girl like, felt too insecure, and she felt like she was dragging down Sayu, and so she committed suicide, and uh, Sayu thought it was her fault. And yeah. and also again, and talk about the mom too. How like oh, the mom, so David, real quick before the mom. Yeah. Um, there's also the cover up too that they were basically bullying her friend because they thought like uh that that Sayu was too pretty for her, and then that like basically they were they weren't picking on Sayu, they were picking on her friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, David. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, it's uh, so it's just like the whole thing. Like Sayu thinks it's her fault that her friend died, and then like the mom made it worse because like the mom just oh, basically blamed her and she doesn't really try to that you know it's think from her side we get into the mom later but that's like that's like what we what we learn about Sayu's backstory. And so so there's an important scene like in in one of the later episodes where like Sayu goes to Hokkaido, she goes to the school that she went to and she's on the roof and she's trying to, you know, just like confront her her past traumas but I really, I didn't like the way the show handled it because it just, because she didn't really even like, didn't really even overcome it. She just like, just like, got triggered and then just like, start like, just had to rely on Yoshida the whole time. Yeah, and, like, Yoshida and, almost forced it, yeah. Yeah, he, he basically had to like, snap her out of it and even still, like, she still is not over it, so like, I don't know, I just, I do, I just didn't like the way that the, that the anime like, portrayed that, that scene. Cool, because a lot of those, a lot of those moments, this was this was like a testing thing for Sayu. I mean, this is like towards almost the end of the season now, where we, where we get to see development for her. But it just kind of shows that you know she's 
she's not as strong as we thought. I'm, I'm assuming she's not as strong as she thought she was going to be, and it just ended up being leaning on Yosha again. Mm. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's a bit there, but yeah, I, that, that, but I agree with you completely, David, for that whole situation. Like, I just really didn't like the way they handled that. So yeah. that's like that's one of the major things. And then we finally get to the mother. I'll let you guys. Oh boy, go on this because I know. I, I will say I got I have to give her credit for credit. most audacious oh, okay. intros to a character that I've seen <laughs> in, in, in quite some time. Um, you know, we all we've gotten up to this point is a little bit of history of, you know, Sayu's family, where they come from and, you know, um, kind of from a, a wealthier background of sorts as well. And the exact minute that we come, you know, home to, uh, to Sayu's family home and everything and you think. Oh, you know, here we are. We're going to have the, the nice Okairi moments. Maybe the mother will be a little heartfelt. Nope. First thing Sayo's mom does is straight <laughs> bitch slaps the hell out of her daughter. Nothing says welcome and... home like a bitch slap. Uh, yep. With no context. <laughs> and, and, and from there, I have a deep hate for this woman, which will only get better as yes. we, you know, talk further about the events to follow. <laughs> mm, mm, um, indeed. But yeah, it caught me off guard. I, I was definitely not expecting a, you know, a, a full blown. And, and she didn't half ass it or anything to your, you know, perfectly timed slap effects. Right. And that was a full blown slap that she gave her daughter. Like oh. there was there was no holding back. Yep. So, yeah. And right. Even for Yoshida, I couldn't even imagine what he, what he must have been like in that scenario. Right. Oh, like you, you know, immediately <laughs> want to leave. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> man, you could cut the tension with a knife easily. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, but was it that whole thing? Because I I remember like we had a conversation too where we like initially thought like the brother was going to be like the evil one, and mm-hmm. we found with we saw oh, oh yeah. damn he's actually really nice he's like a uh, really good guy. Yeah, because we got baited by Sayu because Sayu was saying oh, yeah. that um like she, she said to Yoshida that like her parents are really nice. It's just like there's just some things happening at home that I don't want to talk about. Oh my god! So what a lie! But for me, like I thought like I remember she mentioned she had a brother, so I thought. Oh, maybe okay. Maybe it's the brother then that she's uncomfortable around, and she can't tell her parents about it. That's why she had to run away from home. And then it turns out, yep. oh no! Like like the brother actually was looking out for her this whole time, which which is still really weird the way he did it. Like he like he gave her money to spend yeah. what, to do on her own, and then like he was perfectly fine with her running away to Tokyo. Yeah. And... But before we knew that, we all always saw him. It was just creeping outside of uh, you know talking about stalkers again. He was just creeping outside of the gas station. And, yeah. and we thought, like, oh, man, this guy's going to be evil. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and but so I guess... it was, it was her running away from him, too. So, again, he just, right. just got baited. Yep. yep. Yeah. But for, for everything with the brother, you know, as we first kind of got introduced to, introduced to him, he's definitely a product of his own upbringing where, you know, with everything that we see of, like, money trying to solve answers and everything, like, we can't really blame him too much either. And especially yeah. as we did get to know what a stand-up guy he, he did end up being for, for Sayu and kind of, you know, getting her to um, overcome the traumas and, and kind of grow into her own right. Uh, definitely makes sense for, mm-hmm. for the way that he, that he acts. And the first introductions and everything, right? Yeah, but the, yeah, I, I would I would think just everything about the mom character was just just portrayed just as, uh, just as awful. It, yeah. it's, I mean, <laughs> you, you, you want to talk? I guess a little bit, and then you know, evolving further into the uh, the family conversation that gets to occur once you know oh, they have that very heartfelt reunion at their at their front entrance, and then decide to talk about where yes. Sayu has been and everything this whole time for the last six months. Yes, we are now on episode 12, one before the end, I believe, where they all kind of sit down and you think like they're going to have, you know, just talk like adults. And her mom went the furthest possible away from being an adult, where she just took like the kid stance, was, you know, dropping the, I wish you were never born bombs. And it's just like, my God, like, and then I'm pretty sure she slaps her again, doesn't she? At some point, like, I'm pretty Stop sure it's like a double hit. Yeah. Uh, I swear it was something yeah. like that, and then you, then you have, then yeah. again, this is that that opportunity where I'm like, uh, uh, where you just want Yoshida. It's like, okay, do not be an adult here. Just take the child ra- ra- like ra- root and just throw the cup in her face. I wanted that so bad to happen, and instead, this guy just drinks the, drinks the liquid, and I'm just like, you coward. <laughs> no, I'm I'm gonna have to disagree with you, and I think he did. Like I said, I I totally agree with everything Yoshida does, uh, to to a point, right. Mm-hmm. I can only imagine the shit that would have happened if he actually did throw it at her. Oh, but that would have been 
<laughs> not only are you going to get arrested, you definitely fucked up like whatever chance Sai you had at a normal life, and you know, as for um, like progressing her problems, right? So, uh, he, yeah, that could be a fun story, though. Like, yeah, the story could in, have been in really hindsight, fun. he did everything perfectly, <laughs> but there is no way in hell that anything that he did after that would have saved it if he did throw the glass. So, yeah. so kudos to him for for holding back. I know, man, but it would have yeah. been so much fun. But no, just, just no, sorry, a total different route of this story. Oh god, and just make it completely different. It would have been fun. Yeah, god. I, I think if anything, if I had to try to in some crazy alternate universe play devil's advocate for Sayu's mom, the only way maybe would have had any semblance of respect or kind of uh, empathy for her is if we did learn more about you know uh, Sayu's father leaving, or if he was also kind of potentially maybe physical with Sayu's mom in kind of the events leading up to his departure and everything. But as kind of we saw here, we know none of that. We just know that um, shortly after Sayu's birth, the dad kind of, you know, pee pee poofs yes. out of the picture. And that's the main reason that, you know, Sayu's mom just has this absolute hatred for her. Well, and yeah. again, uh... there's more things where I think from the light novel or from whatever, maybe maybe we could have gotten more exposition, but Unfortunately, yeah. we don't see that. Well, so yeah. at least we just hate her. And <laughs> perspective too, it's like we just you know, like she just blames Sayu for like the, the dad leaving. But again, it's like it's like Stratton says she's acting like a child. She's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Takes no responsibility for having to like to take care of this, this your child. You know, it's like okay, yeah, in your shitty situation, but this is your another person's life you're in charge of. So. You had a choice. You had the fun. And, you and deal like, with the consequences. And I like basically. how Yoshina, like Yoshina, has to point this fact out to her instead of just knowing this. And I, and I was just, I think, was that it may have been episode thirteen where he did it, but where it, like he has like the conversation with her and like letting her know like all those like little facts, like oh you're like the only you're the only mom. I, I can't remember exactly the lines, yeah, but I thought like, like you don't get like just, how parents don't get to choose their kids, kids don't also don't get to choose their parents, stuff like that. Yeah, uh-huh. all the things that basically the parents should know. Yeah, Man, no. big kudos there. Just giving Sai's mom the absolute reality check that she needed, and Oof, I feel like yeah. that's that's the thing, especially you know with kind of these wealthier families and everything. You kind of live in your own separate, you know, universe at times where I can see that, you don't. Yeah. It, it does take someone from the outside that is from a more kind of normal upbringing to really just bring you back to earth and be yeah. like, "Hey, look at yourself. <laughs> You're terrible." <laughs> well, yeah. yes. And then but, the discussion for the final episode. Are we on there now? Yeah, I mean, I, or, I, I hated it. Know. I, don't, or do we I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. We all called it in a sense. We knew it was going to lead to it, but I hated. It. I know. Horrible. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. We we just didn't have the time, right? Like it took so long to, you know, one learn about Sayu's trauma and background, and then two in the last two episodes, you know coming all the way back home, doing the entire resolution with the family, and then, you know, having those final moments um, with Sayu and Yoshida with their, their last night together before Yoshida flies home. It just wasn't enough time, as, right. as kind of seems to be the running theme with this show. Yeah. Um, so I, I was definitely with you, crew. I hated it as well, you know, like we were talking about last week during our podcast. You know, we all kind of joked about how we thought it would go, and Lo and behold, that's uh, that's how the cookie unfortunately crumbled at the end of the day. Um, but overall, um, for me, I would still say, you know, they, they did what they could with with the time that they had in this final episode. Um, I did appreciate, you know, seeing um, Asami's kind of growth after the years. We got to see, mm. you know, her stepping into kind of the the career path of being a writer and right. admittedly I, I won't lie when i when i first saw asami after the time gap i almost thought it was sayu at first because she oh, went really? back to her natural hair color mm, um yeah. i was kind of like wait who i was like who is that and i was like oh wait that's asami <laughs> so um it was nice to see her kind of get her uh her conclusion of things wrapped up of where she was kind of heading next so um but in terms of Yoshida and Sayu's final moments. I don't know, man. Like, I get what they're trying to do with kind of the the feels good ending for everybody and everything, but it just felt really corny to me as well. <laughs> the lamplight comes back into play. Yeah, hey, it's a <laughs> then, classic throwback. All right. Yes. 
it was very yeah it was very big but sorry i, I kind of um missed the part where you guys talked about how you know the coup where it was the ending that we really didn't want but it was we all kind of uh, expected that, that that was the whole th- i think the the signs were when we just didn't see goto for like four or five episodes where there again the development just stopped there was really not much development in the first place but once it was all just done we knew it wasn't coming back so that was uh that was a little bit that was disappointing I probably yeah. know it was for you, Strider, or it was Ku that so badly wanted to not have the generic ending, but sorry to say. No, that was me. That, okay. that, was, that was me. <laughs> sorry to say, Ku, like, if, it if, happened. Yeah. Like I said, <laughs> Jap- typical Japanese writers in their, in their uh, dramas or whatever, you just have to hook up the guy and the girl. You can't just leave like, them be. Yeah. That's like. Oh, God. I don't I know. I also mentioned that too. Like, man, like, because so many times, like, we don't get the, t- the part where. You, you can't just be platonic friends, you know. You don't have to always hook up <laughs> the main, the main two male and female characters. Uh-huh. Not in like, these ones. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so that's that's our main thoughts on the ending. Um, and then I guess I want to bring this topic too about like just we had our issues with like the the supporting characters. Like we all just feel like there's just not enough time to. Um. Well, actually, I, I mean, I know Stren. Actually, like I know Stren. You you want more time for supporting characters. I know, like certain uh, ones, yes. I know, like on Reddit and like other places, like a lot of people criticize the story too for not having more time on character development for the supporting characters. For, for for me, I didn't really mind it as much because, um, I I don't I don't mind having it just be focused on just Yoshi and, and Sayu. I really care more about them. But then um, Justin actually brought it up earlier too how like how they were the story was kind of like was like wishy washy between either the focus on the main characters or trying to like to to in the others. Important cast. It, it definitely tried to no. do too many things at once. And mm-hmm. I think, like you said, David, like for what I imagine for most is that they really got drawn in for, on this relationship between Yoshida and Sayu. And so it definitely would have made more sense and to, to flesh them out more and, and kind of have further interactions on their end. But consistently, the author just seems to, you know, feel like the need of, oh, I haven't shown this, this individual in a while. Let me just bring them in quickly. And the issue is that is once you start to do that, you know, you do gain connections to these other characters. But then you just don't have the time to flesh everybody out yeah. at the end of the day. Like well, the to one. Be, to oh. Be fair, to your, oh, to, to, real quick, Justin, to your point. Like they, I, I thought they flushed out Sai is pretty good, but we really they they barely skimmed anything of Yoshida's past, like anything about him. We knew like of his character, like in the, like in the time that like that we were watching the show, what he was doing for Sai, but we have no idea like like what got him there because there was this five years of him being in love with Goto, saw none of it. And then guess, it's it's just we knew nothing about him. I guess for me, like I didn't really mind not having much for. She, I feel like I like just based on like his character. I feel like I already know like really. Um, he's just like the average person who just sees like this this high school girl that needs help. So of course he's got to help her. Like I don't really see that as anything special that needs development on. That's why I was I was more like out like I felt like I got enough of Yoshida from what they show, but I didn't feel like I got enough of Sayu. Because they held off her backstory for so long, that, like, like I really just felt like this sh- this show was more Sayu's story. And I, I, so at least for me, it's like they took too long trying to reveal her her backstory. Makes sense. Uh... But it's like, but if you have like the main couple though, you, you don't care about his backstory at all. I feel like I just like, you don't want... like like he he just didn't. I don't know. Like he didn't any regret I, I'm kinda... the, the other people like. I know I'm gonna have to disagree with you there. Me or uh, David? No, no, no David. Because okay. if if you really think about it, right? It feels like your stereotypical MC. He definitely would have chosen the route where, like, he would have like, uh, like been taken, like, uh, like been taken into the advances, right? She he probably would have slept to her. He he would have done so the first time, the second time, the third time. But throughout the whole show, he never does. He's a stand up guy, right? And I know okay. he's trying to like portray the not all guys are shit. But if you if you really think about it, this show is not just about Sayu, but about Yoshida as well. And mm-hmm. if you really wanna like see what caused a man to turn out the way that Yoshida did, you need to give off his backstory too. Like, the way Yoshida is the way he is, we need to know why. The way Sayu is the way she is, we we already kind of know, right, right? She had problems with her brothers, her friend committed suicide, she ran away, and then every time she was, like, looking for a place to stay, all the guys that took her in, like, slept with her, sure. you know? So, we already know, like, why Sayu is kind of the way she is. So, I think it would have been more fair, and I think they already had it planned out, but 
they just didn't have the time for it. But I really wish you could have seen the uh, arc with her, with her old ex girlfriend or senpai or whatever mm -hmm. uh, that they cut out. I really mm -hmm. wish we would have seen that so we can kind of see how Yoshida's character developed the way he did. So uh, yeah. that that's okay. my take on it. I yep. guess I guess I am assuming a lot from Yoshida's character, but I don't know. For me, it's like I didn't really need to see more. So. That's... It just sucks when you have only thirteen episodes as well. Ugh. I think I'm like I'm like I'm like one of the few people who uh... really care too much about Yoshida. So rude. Ten out of ten, man. Number two dude know. in the I season. Just... <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like it's Male. it should be something you should you should know, but um, mm. um but I just wanna yeah. I just want to miss, I I want to bring up specifically um the the friend because you know how for so many times this series like. Uh, Hashimoto, like they, I mean, he was just just there, and we didn't really oh care much about. Him. But then, like at at the later episodes when he was trying to find when they're trying to help uh, Yoshida find Sayu, and he's they're in the car, and they make it all dramatic, and like they have so much like 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 you know cut shots of going between them and like the the gas meter and stuff, and then just him yeah. like yelling at at Yoshida like saying like you know you like, you know, shut the fuck up and go find Sayu. I'm like, where'd this come from? You know, it's like before that, yeah. even like my god, because it's like you have a Yuzuha who's just stalking, uh, stalking him outside of his house, and then you have uh -huh. this guy who you think he's supposed to be like one of his best like work friends, just like questioning everything about his life. It's like, dude, get out of there. Where it's, it's where he's making it uh, the, the entire time, he's just negative about Sayu. Just he's like, oh yeah, make sure you don't fall, fall in love with her. Like, he's basically telling her all these things that he thinks that he should be doing when he doesn't really know the context of everything that's happening. Yeah. And then completely just does a 180, like David mentioned, like at, towards the end, where it's just like, where, like, where did this come from? It, was it just because you saw her that this is all coming from, like, out of like left field, or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I know, I know you, too, like, yeah, you need that more like Goto care of them because she basically she basically disappeared after what, like episode eight or something, well, seven or eight, like yeah, yeah. they did her, they did her super dirty. I don't know if you guys picked up in like the end, like kind of montage as yep. they were doing like the two year gap. Yep. Basically, uh -huh. from what I took it is you know Yoshida and Goto went back to the Yakiniku place, and it almost seemed like Goto confessed again fully for Yoshida, but Yoshida was like, nah, like yeah, I'm waiting for yeah, you. yeah, I'm waiting. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, which is crazy because oh. the whole name. Like, I, which I thought it was kind of funny with the uh, the whole title where it's just like after being rejected, I shave and took it in high school runaway. Uh -huh. But at the basically, he was rejecting in a sense like the one that he was originally rejected by. I was like, and I thought uh -huh. that was a burn, even though it had to be Koto, so it didn't really feel like good. <laughs> horrible, just horrible. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But no, I I actually didn't hate the ending as much as I thought it was. For some reason, I thought that I thought it was going to be just so bad. And I thought like one of the best ones was actually when Justin called mm -hmm. everything. I was like, I was like, damn, this guy just knew. <laughs> and then yeah, I was. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I but mean, yeah, that, that little montage um, kind of solidified that yeah. Yeah, Sayu was a uh, Sayu was the winner. But it's like I will say, it was, it was ahead, anything we didn't oh, want. That's why like we're we're kind of like down. Yeah, I know. Like, it's Trust we... me, man. I got that feeling snafu. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's like I still I I still got knocked down the show for that. Like like doing the ending that we don't want. <laughs> Even dead, like it's not even that, right? Like definitely, I like I'm not trying to be biased, right? Definitely okay. wish Goto and Yoshino <laughs> got together, but the ending kind of takes away the whole message of the show, you know? Mm -hmm. By yes. by actually waiting for and like uh, you know ending up with Sayu, right? We don't know what's going to happen, but you're going to assume that's what happened. Yeah. By by doing so, he kind of just like he he kind of took away. Like all the good aspects of, of Yoshida that that mm -hmm. we knew to love, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, I don't know if it's just they ran out of like ideas or they just wanted to go the more popular route with Sayu and Yoshida hooking up. But what was the point of the whole story then? If if at the end of the day he just got rid of all of his like ideas and uh, you know like morals or whatever, and he just uh, went with Sayu anyways, what what was the point of the whole story? You yeah, know? For, for me it was like way early on where I was saying like how I wanted this to just be like two people who just helped each other get their get their lives together. Like that's what right. I was well, that's what I was hoping for. Because then because then you could have saw at the end of the just basically like their flashbacks and then your side is like on her own life. Mm -hmm. Everything's going well. Then you have you know then you have Yoshida with Goto and basically that you know that's kind of that's that's going that's going well as well. But well, didn't get I, any I, of that. I think the thing too is like 
the season could have ended very well, you know, with that final moment between Yoshida and Sayu in the airport, you know, when they're they're having their their final emotional moment, you know, like, hey, it's it's time to move forward. Like, you know, we've we've had these great experiences and to Ku's point, like the message that they're trying to really show here is growth yeah. from both characters' ends. And the fact that, you know, the author chose not to kind of leave it off that with a more open ended interpretation where, you know, you could you know, Sayu graduates, he goes back, meets with Yoshida, they live happily ever after. Or you could think hey, you know, this was a concise kind of six-month experience that two individuals had from very kind of different ends of, you know, the different spectrums in their own regards, and they grew from it. And you can take that from your own regard, and maybe, you know, they didn't end up together, and whatever it may be. But I can't help but feel because they decided to, you know, cram in that that montage of the two years and kind of give, to Ku's points, maybe, you know, what some fans wanted to be the ideal ending it really kind of just leaves you with a a little bit of a bad taste in your mouth at the end of the day, um, because you are kind of just crunching everything and rushing everything where it it, it just belittles it. So I I, I definitely agree with that. I would say, if anything, the only thing that I appreciated was when Yoshida returns back to his home and, you know, he's looking at the the notebook and and the um, pajamas, you know, that Sayo leaves him and everything, but more importantly, the notebook of the different cooking instructions. And he tries to make that miso soup. (laughs) But he realizes, you know, even with the detailed instructions that Sayo gives her, it's just not the same. And he has that moment, you know, where he just kind of falls down and, and starts crying because he realizes that it, yeah. it's not the same. And I would have found that to be much more impactful as well. Right. Of like, if you didn't know, they're just going to get back together. So definitely interesting choices. Huh. And yeah, well said. I just want to yeah, go on to this <laughs> point where he's asking why. I think it's because the author couldn't resist having like the typical I'm sure. popular. He wanted the popular ending. Like, he, he was it the popular ending? Yeah, like just uh, hooking up hmm. the two, the two main leads is like that's such a thing to do, and in these type of like shows, so I guess he couldn't, he couldn't do this. I don't, I don't know. know. At the end, that's just bad writing. Like, what yeah. I was hoping <laughs> was going to happen, right? Is yeah, she does come back, and then uh, you know, after she graduates from school, however, and then you know, like he's living with Goto, he didn't wait for her. And then he welcomes her back, and then she gets, like, she uh, she becomes, like, roommates with Asami or something. And then they go back to the store, they go to college together, and then, like, whenever she needs someone, like, Yoshida's that that that, that brother, like, that family member now that she can uh, trust, right? Like, that's what would have been, I think, following the, the message of the story, that would have made so much more sense. And I think that would have been a lot better because it leaves it open-ended, too, as yeah. to, like, what happens afterwards. Right? Does does they do they go to college and does she still like love Yoshida and then she like pursues him after like uh, college or whatever you know or like how does Asami do right or like does Goto and Yoshida actually work out or do they break up you know that you could have done so much more with this especially with like the message that you're trying to deliver but they just completely dropped the ball with with this cliche ending. Also, so I was gonna say too yeah. like they also they did the they made Yoshida wait because again they don't want. to his people off by having you know an older guy date a high school girl, so they made the show is legal, <laughs> technically uh, fine. Kind of like eh, and down there, really but, but overall, yeah. I guess I guess I'm so glad I watched the show, even though it did like there's a lot of things that did bother me, but at least it was something something that I wasn't used to. So I'll give it credits for that. I just wish it was <laughs> executed better. It was such a strong start. And then even like through the middle, it was just kind of like it was holding. And then just towards the end, it just started going downhill for me. Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely had its moments to shine. But the unfortunate lows just really made you kind of, you know. Yeah. Oh, like like, like David said, I mean, I was actually glad I watched the show. I mean, Yoshi is probably going to be one of my favorite male male characters, even when he did take the the adult route and uh, did not uh, did not, you know, start Throwing cups and stuff. Would, would but, be... Oh, go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say, like, I'll remember the show for him, not so much for the surrounding cast. Uh, mm-hmm. but, you know, maybe Goto. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But definitely Yoshida. Would you recommend this to someone else? Do you think it's? Oof, uh, you would let someone know thirteen episodes. The only, reason, the only reason why I wouldn't is because uh, I think. Would you guys finish? Fit this under rom com or more of like a drama com? Drama, drama, drama. 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 Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I don't know how many I've watched. Of, I've watched many more uh, rom coms. I would actually no. I would say I would still recommend Snafu. I think Snafu did, oh, still did everything a lot obvious. better. 
Yeah, or but it started wrong combo and wrong combo. Like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a high like, bar. I, I haven't watched bars. enough drum coms. There's yeah, such different bars too. And um, I think for yeah, me, it's pass. Like, I'll pass. Pass on me. I I wouldn't just recommend it to anyone. <laughs> if it's someone who is into this, like someone that I know that would be into like the more drama aspects, then maybe I would. Like, but I, mm. I have to. I have to. It it can't be something I casually recommend. It have to be something I, I know a lot and know their taste well in order to recommend. Yeah, it's it's hard to just throw this out there to a general audience for sure. Yeah. Yeah. With kind I mean, of the subject material and everything. If if I know they're in a romance, uh, probably sure. Because uh, cause I cause I think it's it, actually there's really not much romance. Pass it again. Just ignore me. <laughs> it's fine. I, I think I think, I, if you're an, I think if you're an avid admin watcher, I would I would recommend it. But yeah, if you're a new coming to the series, like uh, I I would definitely no. not recommend this. It would it would definitely leave you kind of. Like fucked up in your head, I I feel <laughs> depending on like how you are. I guess, well, you like, well, I I just feel like one of the. Right, go ahead, David. I'll just say if you're a newcomer to kind of like dramatic, this kind of dramatic type of like anime, like I I want to recommend other shows that are easier to get into. It's better. Otherwise, you yeah. have a bad impression. So yeah, mm. that's true. What were you gonna say, Justin? I don't, I was just thinking with like more of the general introductions. Like I feel like they're definitely better shows to do that to kind of just build up your first taste for the genre and see if you want to you know go further and kind of the the more extreme type cases and i'm not saying that this show is like the the exact extreme of of the specific genre um i was just also kind of thinking too from like kind of a general standpoint the thing for me that's maybe kind of hard to introduce and this is maybe just my own viewpoint is that the age difference between Yoshida and yeah, Sayu. Like I feel like that can off. potentially yeah, that was, turn yeah. people away a little like a bit. Just like, initially. Um, I, I, I honestly, I can't think of, and maybe I'm just not as well experienced in the genre, but I can't think of a lot of other shows that have that direct of, a, of an age gap initially. I'm mm, sure I've like... There's some manga that, that do tackle age gap, but I haven't watched many animes. Yeah, I feel like for the most part, the majority of ones that get, have more traction, usually the romances are pretty similar age. They're like either both in high school or they're both, you know, and older or whatever it may be. You don't really have too many. So like, I think there is I, one... I think it's good. It's good to have it in some regards. There's like one just for different varieties, anime. but it's was... tough to, to sell for like a, a normal. There was there's one. Yeah, True. one anime that was airing earlier. I think it was something called like Bloom Into You. It was like like a high school girl and like an older like there was a weight order guy. Mm, like okay, I, I remember that. Yeah, so he, yeah. He's, he's like weight order than than Yoshida, but it was like it was kind of kind of that yeah big age gap too. So it's got, there, but I got one of just the last thing to say. And it's it's tough to the the rule where it says you know give it the first three or four episodes to see if you like it because I I, I would have because for, I mean for me I, I would say that almost uh, those were were their strongest episodes. Before it began to kind of just you know hold off and then go downhill, so it's it's tough to really do that rule <laughs> because it doesn't actually like get better at that point. Does that make sense? It's, it's just a guideline, so mm. I think like once people have, yeah, cause yeah, I know like a lot of people yeah. will give like you know three I or four episodes and then... would drop it at a certain point unless unless like you yeah. right? and they they have that fallacy. They're like the sunk cost fallacy. They're like I came this there far, I can't drop it now. Yeah, I don't know. For me, like I never <laughs> felt a point where I was like. Man, I feel like dropping this show. No, me, me neither. Right? So I was gonna pull him. I was gonna watch to the end because of David's point. It's definitely <laughs> a testament to it. Even if you know, if you rate it kind of at the middle of the road experience, it, it's not as bad as you know other shows that I can think of where it's just yeah. like, man, this is like a slog. Like that's true. Huh? I'm like yeah. you know browsing Reddit on my phone while doing it. Watching I never really had two x speed any moments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did not two x speed this show. So <laughs> not here. Yeah, no. but I, I think, really don't have anything left. Yeah, I think that's kind of end it for the, our discussion of PK Hero. So, yeah, this was the first episode of the new form we're doing. Um, tell us in the comments how how'd you like it? Um, were things I don't know, just in your overall general comments like what you like, yeah. what you didn't like, if you want to see more of this, what we can improve. Yeah, yeah. um, we, we plan we plan on doing uh more of this for the shows that aired spring because you know it's like. It's fresh in our minds, so it's easier to do this. That's why we started with Higa Hero as well. So plan on doing that. If there's like other shows you want us to talk about, let us know too. We're, we'll try to get them. Um, get them. I talk about 
episodes, but like if there's a show that not a lot of, a lot of us has watched, it's gonna take a while for us to catch up. So might be a while, but yeah. So overall, this is just this is the new format going forward. Um, uh, we there will be exceptions where sometimes like if a show is big enough or there's in demand, we will do weekly. It's like we're definitely gonna do the Attack on Titan finale weekly Tensei. discussion and Mushoku Tensei because they were really popular for our, for our group. So definitely doing weeklies for those. But yeah, and I. And I believe the the time you the, you'll be listening to this like either through the podcast or even on YouTube, uh, this will be the after the first week of, of the summer shows. Yep. So that you can let us know what kind of shows you you guys are watching at oh, that yeah. time because then I'll we mention, can I'll keep up it, with it. I'll mention it in that episode. But it's gonna feel weird coming back to this because it's kind of obvious, I know, right? <laughs> but that's I mean that's all yeah, that's all usually podcasts are people like backlog and batch these things. So but it'll be it'll be fine. Exactly. So, yep. And again, I've, uh, yeah. And by this time this airs, we'll be into the summer season and. Uh, the summer shows will be out. So if you want to discuss the weekly, if you want to do like weekly discussions, uh, join our Discord. Um, we'll give our thoughts on shows that aired then. Um, and then, yeah, based on our summer previews, uh, we'll, we'll have all the shows that we'll be talking about. So that's where our weeklies will go. So. Yeah, we'll update the shows too uh, in our Discord because I think we still have the spring season. So we'll have to update that. Yeah. yeah, but so if we don't have the show it. for some reason, if you want to talk about it, just drop it in anime, and we'll yeah. we'll throw it. We'll yeah, throw it just up yell at us. Yeah, we <laughs> yep. have a general yep. section, so yeah, just feel free. Yep. We're open to change. Report, David. Um, we're we're doing yeah, so a lot of changes, but it's exciting. Um, hopefully we'll see we'll see how this goes. So that'll be it for us today. Thanks for joining everyone. Shout out to you, Ulysses again. Yes. Thanks for hanging chat. out with us. Yeah, us Ulysses, Desmond. And... Just... Killing Thanks the for Discord getting... with discussions and everything, yeah, and covering like things our, that we, our... we don't get to cover each week when we were doing the weekly format. Right, which is really great. Yeah, yeah. This... thanks for get, thanks for getting a couple of, a couple of us in the show as uh, too, and also thank you to Desmond. Desmond was a big part of that too. Yeah, so shout out to you guys. You really you really um influence how this thing came about. So shout out to you guys. Yeah. Gosh, well, thanks panel for joining me this, for this. Thanks guys, a lot of fun. It was fun. Yeah, hopefully yeah. we can carry this over to. Uh, new other shows as well so that's it we'll see you next episode bye bye bye, bye.